This is a Q&A Friday and I said Jennifer Price because you're at the forefront of my mind because I didn't really have to put you on my list. But Jennifer Price, you can certainly do a private message me. Um, it's getting harder and harder for me to respond in a timely manner, but I will try my best to respond to you. I welcome that. So go ahead and do so. Um, there's really a lot of good questions coming from Melissa Reen Klein. I hope I said that right. But her first question comes to me, and um, it is chronic low iron. Lowest ever now at four, had several iron transfusions in the summer and cannot keep level above normal. Um, and this has been going on for about five years. Trying therapeutic Marina IUD and um, to stop menstruation and blood loss. Um, recent, she had recent iron transfusion and four more to go within the next two weeks. So, you know, I just want to say that anemia is probably the most common blood disorder for lupus patients. Um, there's, um, let's talk about what anemia is exactly, right? It's, um, measured by assessing hemoglobin and hematocrit as well as your red blood cells, right? So these are the markers that typically your doctor will assess. And basically hemoglobin is a um, carrier protein that carries oxygen from the lungs to the rest of your body, okay? Just so we get that off the table. And anemia really does cause a lot of fatigue and which, is, which explains why we're so tired all the time, especially if you're anemic. So, um, so why are you anemic, right? So with lupus, we've got an inflammatory condition. So that does have, um, that does alter the way your bone marrow produces the red blood cells. And also if you have some iron deficiency, and then if you've got some kidney involvement to where you have issues with, um, a specific hormone that allows um, kidneys to sort of monitor the rate by which you can produce the red blood cells. And then also, of course, we've got immunosuppressive medications that can get in the way of producing these red blood cells. So these are some issues around that. Um, you, I don't, this wasn't really a question. I guess you kind of wanted me to cover, you know, the, um, the intrauterine uterine device that you have, Marina, is typically used to stop the loss of blood during the menstruation cycle. It's to make sure that you don't lose too much blood, and it's probably a good little device of choice to kind of use um, during the times of flare. Hopefully, as the inflammation calms down, that this will too be addressed. Um, and really at the end of the day, it's the inflammation. It can affect everything. So I'm just gonna kind of go on, Melissa, because you had other issues. And I think collectively, everything sort of works together. Second question is neuropsychiatric lupus. So you said that you can't find the right words. You have short-term memory recall and you forget faces. Um, I just want to say that it's so common for us lupus patients to um, lose or feel like we're losing cognitive function. I had the same issue. And so I always joke, is it post-pregnancy? Because I had that issue postpartum when my boys were a little bit younger. And I struggled to get the next word out. And then I had issues... Sometimes I have issues during the times of flare, but I think I start to slur when I get really, really tired. And I have a tendency to run myself down like that. So it's hard to say whether it's strictly due to the lupus or in your case, because you're so anemic, you're not getting the proper red blood cell supply. Therefore, it's the carrier of oxygen as well. It oxygenates your blood. So does that have a significant play? I don't know, but my guess would be is yes. While you can't really say cause and effect for a specific thing, for lupus, there's so many different variables that we have to consider. And again, this question also is, it's the underlying inflammation, right? So that's why I have the lupus brain support. It's helped me a ton. 
because it has L-tyrosine, which is an essential amino acid that a lot of the times we may lack due to the inflammatory cytokines that exists in our body. For me personally, as well as a lot of the patients, because another thing is, even though you don't have lupus, a lot of people walk around with foggy brains and they feel like their memory is going. So I sometimes wonder if it's, you know, digital dementia. It's from being plugged in so much because we do live in such a high uh, stress world today. So going back to that brain support, it allows your brain, because that's the precursor to a lot of the neurotransmitters that make you feel good, that make you think, and we need these chemicals so that our brain is in fully functioning mode. So if you were to be interested, I highly um, recommend that along with the probiotic because again, a lot of, um, in our small intestine of our gut, a lot of the precursors, it's our second brain. So that's where a lot of the um, biochemical reactions occur to supply the brain. So we almost say the gut is our second brain, right? So we need to really pay attention to our gut health. And I really do talk a lot about this for that reason. So I hope that that gives you a little bit more perspective. Um, and let me just make sure that I said everything. Oh, another thing that I do want you to um, kind of consider is here are the options for you. In the group under files, I a long time ago, I uploaded uh, an elimination diet guide. It's a guide that you can easily implement and it's an elimination diet because within the realm of functional medicine, it's considered the gold standard, both diagnostic as well as treatment. So it's a one-stop approach for you to try that out until the inflammation subsides and then after which you can start to introduce all the other foods. So I recommend that you start there. If not, we do have at Lupus Pharmacy with an F, like farm, farming the foods, lupuspharmacy.com, we have the gut restoration guide that might be a little bit easier for you to consume the information. And then also we have the, the gut healing protocol that's available that's more video oriented. We spent a lot of time breaking down the concept so it's easier for you to follow. We've got those options for you. Everything that I mentioned, including the probiotics and the lupus brain support is also available at lupuspharmacy.com. So if you were to take me up on that, third question you asked was losing your hair. You have big bald spots, biopsy says lupus, getting steroid injections, anything else I can do? Well, my first initial diagnostic uh, process was because of alopecia. I had a big bald spot right here. I went and got a wig. I talk about this on my website. That was the most devastating thing ever. Um, anyway, so I feel you. But the steroid injection, again, will be a very potent anti-inflammatory, right? But I found that steroids also thin out your hair. And so I didn't like being on the steroid is why I'm doing a lot of the things that I talk about. You guys, I really do live and breathe everything that I recommend for you. So take that with whatever, what it's worth. But I do know a lot and I've tried a lot. My body's been the guinea pig. But I will tell you, I've been off and on, and I make sure that everything that I recommend to you is legitimate. And I can tell you, when I stop taking these supplements, I do have a lot more hair loss to a point it's kind of scary. Um, and I attribute that to my gut health because I'm not able to absorb a lot of the nutrients because of the underlying inflammation that's always with me due to my lupus. So I always take a probiotic, no matter what. I don't take a break from it. And then along with that, I have what's called the lupus beauty support. It's a collagenous formula that's been known to really improve the state of your skin as well as hair. It's going to help in conjunction with that is the lupus mineral support. So these three things are the beauty. Um, I think I put a bundle on my website because that's what I take and I can like miss everything else, but that's something that I make sure that I get. And so try that out. I encourage you. And then the fourth question comes from Cynthia Hildreth, and she asks, why when having lupus, the tone or texture of your skin changes? Because you used to have uh, beautiful skin before lupus came. 
Um, so as they say, beauty starts from the inside. So because lupus is so inflammatory, it really triggers a lot of abnormalities in your whole body. And you'll find when the gut is unhealthy, um, it really appears on the outside in the way of, you know, acne or dull skin or melasma. I struggled with melasma here for a long time. And that's because of the hormonal imbalances. And we think hormones and we think ovaries or our thyroid or our endocrine system, but also it has what's called a hypopituitary, right? It really interacts with our hypothalamus and our pituitary gland to really activate or um, inactivate um, some of the hormones that, at, that has a play with one system to another. So when you talk about the hormones and its effect due to the inflammation because of lupus, it really is a big complex um, systemic effect that we're dealing with more so than, you know, just saying we have lupus, right? So I really get down into the science of how all these things come together. All that to say, that we know that when you have a lot of hormonal imbalances and you're not able to detoxify it properly because you lack the ability through your liver and your kidneys to excrete them appropriately, then you're gonna be left with a lot of waste and toxins. Is why also I promote the alkaline detox protocols to cleanse out your body. And a lot of you guys have um, expressed an interest and seeing as it's a January, I have haven't had time to promote that kind of stuff, but it's out there for you guys. It's everything that I do and I promote here on a regular basis and we have good results with that. But all that to going back to Cynthia's question about that doling is, is really an Eastern philosophy. I studied a lot of the um, traditional Chinese medicine and I studied the effects of the gut as it pertains to the outside. So in Eastern philosophy, um, we consider the gut to be the, uh, our face and our skin and our hair to be the mirror of our health state in our gut. So we always look to the gut before we treat anything else. Even before the terminology of gut permeability as well as leaky gut came to place in the Western states, in the Eastern world, everything's about the gut. That's where we start. And that's the, um, that's the first entry from the outside in. And that's how everything gets triggered. So it's helpful to look at your gut is why, again, you don't have to buy anything. The, it's under the files. It says elimination diet guide. I would highly recommend many of you just try that out. But be really regimented about sticking through that program because, as I said, it's not only a gold standard, but it's also diagnostic as well as, you know, uh, it's really healing type of a program. So it's got double-sided benefits to it. So why wouldn't you do that, right? So I encourage you to go there. Thank you so much for joining me today. I want you to go ahead and go. Um, it would help me out a ton if you subscribe to my YouTube channel, like us on Facebook page, Lupus Rebel, as well as please subscribe to our podcast. Everything that I do, I'm trying to put it as much out there as possible to help as many people as possible living with lupus or any type of autoimmune conditions. So help me spread the word so we can help many people as possible. So until next week, I'll see you then.